Okie dokie, so Prime's had a good few days to dry off and in that time I've been thinking of what I can and can't do with this kit. Now I have a thing about Drew Black. The bodysuit itself is supposed to be black, which we've already seen and we kind of know from the films and things like that. And there's a picture somewhere, I'm sure there's a picture somewhere. There we go. Picture from the film itself. And he's got black under armour or body stocking or whatever it is. But we've got a black background, but that looks dark grey, but that's black, and that's supposed to be black, and yeah, really bothers me. So, I never use true black on any of my figures that I build for my personal collection. Now if we have a look at this now, the belt is black. This is really, really, really dark grey, with a few highlights, I don't know if you can make those out, and a few shadow lines too. And it all tricks the eye, so as you move away to a proper viewing distance, it all blends into one, and it looks like one colour. That's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to go back to the dark grey blue RLM 74 stuff that I used for the pre-shading on the ATST, And everything that's supposed to be black on the undergarment, or whatever it's called, is going to go this really dark colour. And I'm going to work from there, see how that looks. I've been thinking about this and it's what three weeks give or take since this kit was released I'm still trying to build it and there's people all over the place building these things at the moment and yeah I don't like following patterns I'm changing mine I've just decided so Give that a good old shake. Yeah, we can work with that. Here we go. And if this is too light, which it looks in the cup, you know, it looks like a, a mid grey. If it is too light, Starship filter take care of this nicely, I'm hoping. You should do. We'll see find out. This could go horribly wrong and this could end up on the edit editing floor. So, quick test of the flow on the inside of the spray booth. Make sure we're all running smoothly. Light coats. Don't try and wallop everything in one go. Keep the brush moving so we don't form puddles or anything like that. On the brush itself, I'm pressing down just a tiny bit for the air and pulling back a tiny bit with the needle so that we've got better control of where the paint's going. Right, I can hear again now. Ooh, where are you going? Right. Now, right at the end of my needle, every now and then there's been a fleck of paint coming off. The only thing with these model air paints, there we go, as you can see there, it's building up on the end of the needle, which does happen. So, just every now and then, just very carefully, yeah, especially if you're new to this. Um, trying to take that crown off while she's spraying or anything like that 
because you risk dropping your needle, uh, dropping your airbrush and bending your needle. Yep, yeah, trust me, done that a few times. Camera's struggling to focus just at the end there. There we go, where the needle is. Just have a cotton butter hand. And just every now and then, give it a wipe. Just to clear everything off. Otherwise, you end up, as you've just seen, with that big goop of paint. Let's see if we can get some out. Because over time, that will dry on the end of your needle, and then all of a sudden, you get this big flick of paint coming off. So, just be aware of that. Uh, some people do find mod layer a little bit too gloopy, um, which does happen over time because it is an acrylic. It does skin over. Um, I normally find a couple of drops of X20A into the cup and give it a quick stir. Does the job. So whilst we've still got this in the cup now, and this is flashing off for a few minutes whilst I've been waffling at you, um, there's a few spots that have missed on there. I not too sure how that's going to turn out on film. I'm just going to fill those in, just very gently, very lightly. And there's a couple of under flashes there as well that I've missed. We can pick most of this back out once we get him off the frame anyway. A couple of spots there too. So I'm going to be doing this build slightly differently. I'm going to concentrate on the figure for one section. And I'm going to concentrate on the bike in another section and then do the base separately too. Just so that it's not skipping backwards and forwards like um, the ATSC did for a while. Which confused me at one point. And uh, I mind you guys. There we go. That's what I was talking about at the end of the needle. As the paint's drying and skinning over. It's falling me. Forming more and more on the end of the needle so us seasoned nurks tend to just whip the cap off and you know, we've got control of it there and then but if you are new to this keep that cap on as much as possible and just run a cotton bud around it and very very carefully though because you can bend the end of that needle but uh, like I say I'm concentrating on some explanations jump as well as I'm figuring stuff out. I really should start scripting these. I really should. Anywho, back to the point. I'll concentrate on the figure first, then the bike, then the base, so that it's not backwards and forwards. Um, in the building, right? Why didn't I paint you? Yes. So this is section one, section two, then section three. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop over explaining things. Ugh. Okay. Hey, so whilst that, uh, that figure's drying off, I'm going to grab hold of this fella that's been knocking around for ages and ages and ages. Uh, that's actually off my big F18. Shush. Oh, I've just done that off camera. Never mind. Luckily I missed. So the little bit of RLM74 that I've got left in the cup at the bottom. Just going to fill in his jersey. You can see there already, that's just the brown base coat, but we've already got the base coat, highlight, shadow. But hopefully, just using the back of his shirt, once that's dried, I can talk you through what I'm going to do with the big figure. Eventually, so that should do it. Cut to air, a quick dry. use that up right so I'll leave him to dry for about half an hour and then I'll come back and talk you through that whilst the big fella's still cooking and doing his thing and stuff and I'll explain using him what I'm about to do right then are we back I think we're back are we I don't know I've literally got about 10 minutes to film this um because i'm still doing the move with the missies and it's literally been about five weeks since I did that uh in that last clip that you saw when i basically called him in 
uh, RLM74, which is the, the dark grey blue from Vallejo Model Air. And then I'm going to try and show you the technique that I've got in mind. Let's get some extra lighting and get rid of that glare if we can. Oh, great, we've got shadows everywhere. I need a key light. I really do need a key light. There we go, that's better. Right. Zoom you in. Uh, because it has been so long, I really can't remember what I was planning or anything like that. I've not got time to run through my clips properly. But I do vaguely remember I did that. So if we faff about with angles and stuff like that, we can see straight away we've got a mid-tone, a shadow and a highlight layer straight away. And we've not even done anything with the paints. So we're going to create that illusion. I can't find my palette anywhere, so I'm going to be using some plastic. And black primer, because I've not got any black paint either. <laughs> Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. The seven Ps. Alright, there we go. So nice and runny. I'm going to go straight in. Now if we use the natural light we've got now already, we can straight away see there's a shadow. Right there. So this is actually darker than I would normally do. This is just a demonstration. Just to get the effect. And I'm holding my breath while I do this for some reason. So we've got three lines there straight away. I'm going to actually extend that one. A little bit there. Let me do one line there. One line there, one there, a little bit of a smudge, but we're not too worried about that. So we get the idea. And then we can come in there as well. Just to give the emphasis. Uh, do another one there, another one there. And this is a really quick and nasty way of doing this. So we got there. So if we just go with a three-tone thing for the time being, so we get mid-tone, shadow, highlight. So the base coat, the dark, dark grey blue, and the RLM74. That's going to be the mid-tone straight away. Now, ideally. What we would do normally is mix that with the black, but my black hasn't arrived yet. And the same with the lighter colour, we would actually mix. So you'd end up with five shades. You'd work through them. So we'll go with dark sea grey for the moment. Again, this is just to demonstrate the technique. This isn't the hard and fast way I'm doing it. Turn him upside down. And you're basically going to go against the shadows that you've just done. Show the people. Not yet. With the brush in, oh focus. Hold your brush. Pull and twist to a point. Drew the paint. Really would help you for showing you how to do that. Have a hinge. So we're basically just going to pick out the complete opposite of where we've done the shadows. I'm not showing you again. It stands out like a sore thumb close up, but as you pull away to a normal viewing distance, it does blend. Now if you do this in thin coats, and you mix your paints properly, 
the effect really is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, I'll cover this properly when I get to do the uh, the biker himself. Let's give that a few minutes to dry. But what I would normally do here is take some of that grey off to one side, the mid-tone, and then mix that with some of the black. So you get mid-tone, uh, first height, uh, first shadow, second shadow. And then we do the same here. So you get first highlight, second highlight. So you're working through the shades then. And you blend it all in together. And as that's drying. So rough as hell, all close. We should pull away some white to come. Just pull away, it does blend away. And tricks your eye. So hopefully. We can do that in big scale now. I can find my palette and I can show you that properly. Right then. For the time being, I'm just going to concentrate on all the dark parts. So we can get all those sorted out. And I'm going to leave as much armour off as possible. Um, just so that we can get into all these nooks and crannies. Or crooks and nannies. Or, I don't know, something. Um, so. Ooh, his shoulder builds up like three peels. I can see straight away. Right. Need some kind of cutty things. Be careful with these boys and girls, because you will nip yourself, and I've got a couple of nicks and dinks in me. And... We'll need a sharp cutty thing. So we can take care of a few burrs and... Gribblies and things. And following the instructions, we'll go with frame B. There we go. Parts. Focus, 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 focus. 27 and 28, first of all. So, as you'll see, I am going to be nipping backwards and forwards in the instructions whilst I build him. I'm basically going to clip away quite merrily plonk like so and then on the instructions it says PC9 PC whatever that one is uh, PC11, PC8 which are as my good friend of the incredibly talented Mr Fox will tell you back up! oh dear, right Really must stop messing about like that. So we need number nine. Next saw. Which is here. So number nine's on the left. Number eight is on the right. Hmm. Like so. So number nine, number eight. PC11, which is this thing here. Mark So, 9, 8, 11. Back and front. And I promise you that is my chair. Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. And so, with the cutty thing, cutty sharp thing, sharp cutty thing. Cutty sharp. There's a brand of matches in there somewhere. Very carefully. Try not to slice your thumb apart. Nibble away. Very gently. Definitely helps if you've got a sharp blade. 
New blades tend to be bloody awesome at this. But they also tend to be very cutty, so do be careful. I am a professionally trained idiot. And then push the polycup. And don't be a wing nut and put it in wrong like I've just done. Don't panic, these things are fixy bubble. He says, not fixing it. Yay! Alright, hands up, who's giggling? Sweet. Yeah, come on, you went in, you can come out. I promise, they do come out. With persuasion, like so. Put it in the right way. Definitely, definitely helps. Definitely, definitely folks. Mm, come on. Talk amongst yourselves, this might take a while. <laughs> See, no problem. Why are you misbehaving? I don't play this game anymore. Could we go play cricket instead? I like cricket. I'm good at cricket. I might used to mangle the bugger. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. That's not good. I don't want to play this game anymore. Can I play something else now? There we go. <sighs> now then. What should be a straightforward job and incredibly stupid and difficult by me. Yay! So, next couple of stages, armour, armour, with a black bit, armour, body, let's do the body, do we do the body, nope, nope, don't do the body, so we'll find his arms instead, so we don't need his body, ooh, we need his neck parts though, we can do the neck parts, which is polycap seven, polycap seven, 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 seven. That's just like the three pill kit with the nut part. Hmm, interesting. And the black part in the kit that didn't paint black. hinge. <laughs> Uh, what do we need? 57 and 58. I'm not painting his gun either. Or his mouthpiece. Mm. Can I go home now? I want to go home. It's a silly game this. Can I play something else now? I want to play something else. Can I play something else? Talk amongst yourselves lads. I can't find it. <sighs> do you know why I couldn't find it? It's been there the whole time. <laughs> Uh, that's it, I'm going on. It's not your fault, Leon. Oh, it's late. It really is late. Uh, so, the real life stuff. We're still in the process of unboxing everything from moving my girlfriend to a new house. Uh, it's slightly smaller, so we've lost a little bit of storage space, which means we're trying to figure out what's important to stay out and what's going in the loft and things like that um, where else is there yeah so today we'll backwards and forwards 
and I had to come back to Manchester to take care of stuff. And there was a fella who has reached a point in his life and decided that it was better for everyone around him if he went to the nearest bridge and tried throwing himself off, which closed the uh, the motorway, the M56, off for most of the day. Now, happily, they've managed to talk him down, and happily, he's getting treatment. It just makes you wonder. You know, having been in similar situations where I've had those kind of thoughts myself, you do get into this thing of, it would be better if I wasn't here, for all concerned. It's got nothing to do with being selfish, you're actually thinking of other people before yourself, but you don't realise the kind of chaos you're causing around you. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. I don't know what I mean. It's not a nice place to be. Granted, it caused a massive, massive, massive chaos problem for the best part of, what, six hours, easily, in the area. And it's right, the corner, right around the corner from where I live, in real life. It caused absolute mayhem. I was stuck in traffic for the best part of an hour, trying to get back home. And then you get some wing nut leaning out of the car going, jump! It's not what you need. It really isn't what you need. Happy that people who shout that kind of thing are happy with their own lives. When people isn't happy with their own and they're trying to do stuff like that and they're trying to get help and I'm leading to it. So I'll throw overlapping these like Lego pieces from the old Lego Technic sets I love them ooh stop 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 we must another pike out up So yeah, hopefully our friend on the bridge is receiving the proper treatment now and will end up in a happier place than where he was that led him to that situation to begin with. Alright, be careful boys and girls, he doesn't show it in the instructions that there's a blanky out spot. Will you focus? No, you're not going to focus, are you? You're not going to play. Fair enough. And there's a hole. The hole needs to go to the top. Otherwise you won't be able to connect his midriff to his body. And then this tiny little groove just in there that matches up with this piece. And be very very careful with your pins when you close all that up. What's that? Marvelous. Marvelous, Marvelous, Marvelous. Right, so that's B parts, like I say, I'm concentrating on the back parts, not the armour. So we need his body. He's got a bottom piece. Oh dear, no, that's looking like a thong. I've got a bloody song in my head now. Thong, 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 stop it. Stuck now, it's in my head, it's staying there. Ooh, Tony's made another boo boo because Tony didn't paint that piece either. So he's gonna look like he's wearing the thong. <laughs> oh, magic, 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 magic. You'll see in a minute. And if you've already built this kit, you'll understand where this is going in a second as I close his bum. Oh, that just looks wrong. I see butt crack. Ugh. 
Mm, so leave the cut piece off. Leave his butt crack off. <laughs> Stop your nonsense. Alright. Let's build a thigh, I think. Is that thigh? Nope, that's a shin. So, we need B117, B120, right, why, why, why have you done that? This one with this one, this one with this one, why? Why can't they just put them together? Why the crossover? So awkward. It's a bit flimsy. Let's see. Hmm. Let's keep an eye on that. Mind you, once it all connects up with the shin part there, it should take care of itself. He says. So we have to be careful now. That's right leg. That's right leg. Build a thigh, which is B112 and B121. Ooh, that's interesting. It is interesting. I'll show you in a second. When I get there, break up five, 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 five. five. I'll do my normal thing as well in a minute, where for the sake of not repeating myself with the build, I'll speed through the rest of the. Uh, the process. Yeah. Yes, there's a great big gouge where I've managed to chip some paint away, but if we have a look, that's definitely some kind of webbing strap thing. So I might have to do that slightly different colour. Just to pick it out or emphasise it or something like that. It's interesting. Very interesting. Very well, interesting indeed. B1, 10 and 7. 10 and 7. Ten and 7. I've done it again. What's the point of doing that? That's just daft. Why? Polycut one, polycut one, polycut one, polycut one, polycut one, polycut one, polycut one. One. Polycut one, polycut one, polycut one. Shove you in there, shove you in there. Shove you that way. Take your time, boys and girls, don't rush it like I'm doing. Mm. Excuse me. Oh. oh, I don't remember eating that. And then you should hear... Click! And it's on.
click and it's home. So that's the right leg sorted out. Oh, I'll say it's the right leg, it's uh, most of his right leg. Here, and all the way over there. Oh, how very odd. Click. Point up four. Splot four, and it's got one of those shelty things to tell you that that big sticky LP is there. Goes to the outside of the joint, like so. Inside. And again, be careful with the really tiny flimsy pegs. There we go. Really careful. Make sure they line up before you push. And don't forget, if it isn't going, if it's not doing its thing, if it's not easy, you're on a bit of a struggle with the fit, take it apart, have a proper look, you're doing something wrong. And that's how good these kits are. Good firm fit, and it's not quite the click that you would expect, but you know it's home. So there we go. There's oh, get in. That's a good firm click. Oh dear. Here we go. There's one leg. Lovely. So there's a couple of obvious seams, but I'm happy enough with where that is. There's a bit of paint he's doing, and that's quite a nice seam line, that, to be honest. We should be able to lose that with the paint. Hopefully. We'll soon find out. If I know. Right, speed build the other leg.
me in with a stand there's a stand and that tells you what the stand is uh, I need one of these I need one of these I really do I need several actually so I'll go away and things like that seam there we'll take care of and there's bits and bobs where I've not quite painted properly like there so we'll go around and Mr. his thong um, yeah, we'll take all the sub-sections apart we'll go around, we'll fill in the bits we've missed right in there in the gloves as well across his knuckles so we'll give them a touch up stop it and then we'll come back and then we'll do some detail painting on the bodysuit see you in a minute <laughs> 